Are you struggling between the Mac Mini M1 versus the Mac Studio M1 Max for your next computer upgrade? In this video, I'm gonna share my thoughts between these two amazing machines and which one will be best for certain workflows and ultimately help you make a decision that's best for you. Thank you for everyone that has hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you. And if you're visiting the channel for the very first time, I'm Ryan and this is The Elevate Project. To help professionals like you elevate your remote office with tech and be more confident and engaging delivering online presentations working from home. If you already have a Mac Mini M1 and are thinking of upgrading or don't have either and you're trying to decide between getting the Mac Mini M1 or the Mac Studio, I'm gonna share my thoughts in both scenarios in hopes to help you make the right decision. Now right off the bat, if you are looking for a new daily computer for working on office apps, checking email, web browsing, and edit videos from time to time, honestly, get the Mac Mini and bump up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and if you run a lot of apps at the same time, you're gonna be a-okay. This will be perfect for 80% of you. Now, if you want to know more, let's get into it. I currently am using the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't have the Mac Studio M1 Max or the M1 Ultra, and I haven't been able to even test or demo the Mac Studio prior to making this video. What really sparked this video is my own internal struggles and thoughts about upgrading or just make an excuse to purchase the Mac Studio to test and review. And if I was going to just review a Mac Studio, I would just purchase the base model with no customization. Then I thought, is it worth it to just upgrade? And if that is the case, what would I customize to ensure I get the most out of this machine for years to come? Now I wanna be clear, I am not going to compare the Mac Studio M1 Ultra because if you're serious in thinking about the Mac Studio M1 Ultra, realistically, the Mac Mini M1 will be off the table. And you are more likely will be wanting to compare the Mac Studio M1 Max versus the M1 Ultra. So when I say Mac Studio going forward, I'll be talking about the M1 Max version. So I wanna first start with the scenario if you don't have either the Mac Mini M1 or the Mac Studio. When it comes to the physical appearance, the Mac Mini is slimmer, all the ports are in the back for power, gigabit ethernet, two USB-A ports, two Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And literally the same style since 2010, which isn't a bad thing. Something to note is the Mac Mini M1 only supports two external displays. One display up to 6K resolution at 60 Hertz refresh rate connected through the Thunderbolt port. And one display with up to 4K at 60 Hertz connected to the HDMI port. I mention that because right away, that might be the deal breaker right there if you need to run more than two displays at the same time or two displays that both need to be 5K or higher resolution then opt for the Mac Studio as it will support up to five external displays at the same time. Now the Mac Studio, on the other hand, is like having 2.5 Mac Studio stacked on top of each other. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit heavier and has front ports for easy access with two USB-C ports on the M1 Max version and an SD card reader. On the back, it has power, 10 gigabit ethernet standard and you can get that on the Mac Mini M1 as an upcharge. You get two USB-A ports, four Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Like I said earlier, the Mac Studio supports up to five displays at the same time, supporting four 6K displays like the Pro Display XDR through the Thunderbolt ports. And it will also support one 4K display up to 60 Hertz through the HDMI port. Now there are going to be different workflows and demands that will merit the need for the performance the Mac Studio can provide. Reality, with current everyday computing, working from home, 80 to 90% of people will be happy 
and content with the performance from the Mac Mini M1. I'd be comfortable to say, actually more than happy, to say that the performance from the Mac Mini M1, if you're upgrading from a quad-core i5 or i7 chipset, is going to be phenomenal. The reason why is that the Mac Mini M1 and Mac Studio in single-core performance is going to be very similar. Single-core performance will be for everyday tasks, like checking email, working on office documents, and web browsing. Multi-core performance will kick in for more intensive computing like coding, photo and video editing, audio production, 3D modeling, and gaming, just to name a few. Realistically, if you're in the market for an Apple computer, you are most likely not getting one for gaming. That being said, the GPU performance for video editing and exporting your files is where you'll see the main difference. Looking at multi-core performance, the M1 chip on the Mac Mini comes with an 8-core CPU, 4 performance cores, and 4 efficiency cores, plus 8-core GPU and a 16-core neural engine. On the M1 Max chipset on the Mac Studio, you have a 10-core CPU with 8 performance cores and 2 efficiency cores, plus you get a 24-core GPU and 16-core neural engine. So depending on your workflow and needs, the Mac Mini M1 will be more than adequate. Plus, from my experience, if you do video editing, it tackles 4K editing pretty well and renders video and exports faster than my older i7 quad-core MacBook Pro, which I was happily using since 2016 up to 2020 with little complaints. Actually, 2021, probably about mid to the end of 2021. Now, if you're doing a lot of intensive computing, but not necessarily at pro level, the Mac Studio will be an amazing choice. And if you do a lot of video editing in Final Cut Pro, the M1 Max does have an advantage with two ProRes encode and decode engines, which means you will have faster renders and exports. Now, let's compare some pricing. The Mac Mini M1 I have is upgraded to the maximum 16 gigabits of RAM, and a 512 gigabit SSD storage. In reviews and testing, the SSD performance wasn't outstanding and adding external SSD to edit videos was more affordable with no real extra performance difference versus the built-in SSD. Also in my situation, I do have a Synology network drive to save most of my files that don't take up any extra space on my hard drive. The cost on Apple's website at the time of this recording is $1,099 US. And based on the performance I'm experiencing is the best value in my opinion, where you will get similar performance and not notice a big difference, if any, for everyday tasks. For intensive computing, specifically in my experience with 4K video editing and audio production, the Mac Mini M1 handles it well with simple transitions and overlays, and even better with 1080p content. Now you might be thinking, but Ryan, how about future-proofing? Pay a little more today to last even longer tomorrow. Because let's think about that for a moment. Tomorrow, 8K video editing will be the standard. That might be another reason to jump to the Mac Studio if you're already shooting at 8K. So that will be a huge advantage over the Mac Mini. The cost on Apple's website at the time of this recording for a Mac Studio, 10-core CPU, 24-core GPU, and a 16-core neural engine, you get 32 gigabytes of RAM standard, and with two terabits SSD, it comes to $2,599 US dollars. Now, you might be like, Ryan, it's double the RAM and two terabits of SSD. That isn't really a fair comparison. Well, first, the 32 gigabytes of RAM is standard. So I can't downgrade to save money anyways. The reason I upgraded the SSD in this scenario is because at least two terabits, which you could upgrade to eight terabits SSD, is based on two things. First, if we're thinking of future-proofing, we will assume programs and files will be larger over time. Secondly, Reviewing some read and write speeds from the built-in SSD on Mac Studio over the Mac Mini was enough of a difference where it will be worth it to edit from the main drive versus using an external SSD, especially if you are going to be 
editing 8K video, that's gonna be much larger files than 4K videos. With the benefits of the M1 Max encode and decode engines and the fast SSD, we'll be worth upgrading the SSD through Apple, which isn't that bad of a cost versus using typical external SSDs, which could be slower read and write speeds. Again, the comparison focus on truly future-proofing, giving us a $1,500 US dollar difference in price with those specifications. That's more than double the price of the Mac Mini M1 that I currently own. What do you think? Is the Mac Studio worth more than double the price? Will it double your performance and productivity? My personal recommendation, if you don't have either machine and you have the budget, I would opt for the Mac Studio. I currently have a display, webcam, the Rodecaster Pro, and an external SSD, which means the Mac Studio still has room for me to add more peripherals if needed without purchasing an extra dongle or dock. The Mac Studio also comes standard with 10 gigabit ethernet to provide blazing transfer speeds to a NOS and future internet speed advancements. Now, if you don't have the budget or after watching this video, still haven't justified the 1500 US dollar extra cost, and you are part of the 80 to 90% of people that won't utilize the performance increased to its maximum potential on a regular basis, you won't regret the Mac Mini M1. In my experience, Apple computers last a long time. Hence, my last computer before my Mac Mini M1 upgrade was a 2016 MacBook Pro, which still is useful and powerful for most of today's tasks working from home and fully capable of editing 4K, just not as smooth and easily as the Mac Mini M1, and only can imagine export times for my videos on the Mac Studio. So let's now attack the upgrade dilemma for someone that already owns the Mac Mini M1 like me. The struggle is real, my friends. First, remember I am looking at a typical workflow, daily everyday tasks, and occasionally edits photos and edits videos once or twice a week. I definitely would not call myself a power user. It is hard pressed not to think about the Mac Studio, which doubles my RAM from 16 to 32 as a standard option, has fast SSD performance, and can help eliminate using an external SSD to edit videos in most cases. Lastly, 10 gigabit ethernet port is standard. This is super tempting, and I'm not gonna lie, my experience with the Mac Mini M1 has been impressive to say the least. I don't think I even have come close to taxing this machine because I have not pushed the M1 to the point I hear the fans kick in in high gear. I literally don't even hear my Mac Mini M1 running. On my older MacBook Pro, the fans were so loud and annoying in certain situations and mainly editing 4K videos and using OBS for live streams. You will need to be honest with yourself if the Mac Mini M1 is or not suiting your needs for your workflow if you already have one. I said earlier, Apple computers last a long time. The Mac Mini is more than capable based on my workflow. If I continue to use the Mac Mini for at least one year and decide to upgrade, the newer Mac Minis or Mac Studios or even MacBook Pros will most likely have a faster CPU with a M2, M2 Pro, M2 Max, or M2 Ultra, and more standard RAM for the same price of the Mac Mini or Mac Studio today. I have my Mac Mini M1 connected to a 49-inch Samsung Odyssey G9 running at full resolution at 120 hertz. All my peripherals are connected without needing any extra dongles or dock just, just yet. It is maxed out, but I don't, I don't need anything extra just yet. The smart and value decision is to stick with the Mac Mini and wait to upgrade. I get it. You might have FOMO or fear of missing out. Reminder, everyday tasks, I believe you really won't notice a difference in performance and unless you know your workflow will change drastically tomorrow, if you already have the Mac Mini M1 16 gigabit version, stick with it. Now, looking back on my thoughts and reasons to choose the Mac Studio is if you need more than two displays. 
you photo and or video edit daily and are starting to use 8K footage. And if you have the 16 gigabits of RAM and you notice you really need more based on your workflow, the Mac Studio is probably gonna be a good choice. Lastly, you have the budget and you want a future proof for many, many years to come or you just want the Mac Studio and that's okay too. If I end up getting the Mac Studio within the year, it will, be because, it will be because I caved into the want because it isn't a need situation for me. Or I got one to test and review and fell in love with it. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing and hit the, subs and hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video. If you decide to buy the Mac Studio over the Mac Mini, let me know in the comments below and let me know why. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.